He is risen. Amen. It is awesome to have you all here worshiping with us this morning at Living Faith Lutheran Church on our online worship, whether that's Facebook or through our website. We are grateful to have you with us this morning. For all of our visitors who aren't part of our local congregation here, we are especially grateful to you. And uh, as always, if you would like to know more about our congregation, please check out our website, livingfaithclive.com. We are kind of wrapping up a sermon series here that is The Shepherd Speaks. Uh, we're moving things around a little bit in the church here just because of next week's holiday and uh, we want to still celebrate Pentecost and Easter's ending and summer's coming up and COVID-19 and for all of those reasons. Um, we're going to be wrapping up this sermon series today. Uh, next week's sermon is kind of a standalone. And then we have a brand new summer worship series, New Normal. And I'm guessing you know exactly what I'm talking about when I say new normal. We're going to examine uh, what scripture has to say about different individuals who had to live with a new normal. And just in general, what the Bible says about when God changes things. So uh, that's what we're looking forward to. But today we're hearing that story of Pentecost. And as always, uh, we'd like to start here with a word of prayer and our invocation, if you would join me. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity to gather together in our homes separately uh, around the state, around the country, around the world, as we look to you and to your word to know more about you and to understand, especially today, of all of the good things that you have done for us in those times of change and when times have been strange, you have been for us always the rock, the one thing that doesn't change in our lives. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We continue with our first song, which is Great and Mighty King.
Continue by confessing together our common Christian faith in the form of the Nicene Creed, if you would join me. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Continue now with our prayers, if you would join me. In our prayers this morning, we are lifting up all of those um, for whom we've been praying for several weeks now. Uh, that would include, of course, Joanne Meyer, the D Highs, uh, also Ted and Dick, Dick and Teddy Sales. And um, we're lifting up today especially to members of our preschool family, Amanda and John Wallace. Both of them have been diagnosed with COVID-19. As of the time of this recording, Amanda is doing pretty well. Miss Amanda, uh, of course, is struggling because it is not fun to have this illness. Uh, but John is doing uh, a bit worse than that. And again, as of this recording, is on the ventilator, but uh, has had some change and some improvement in his oxygen levels. So we are thankful for that. Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for all of the good gifts that you have poured out upon us. Even in strange times like this, where we don't always remember all of those good gifts. We don't necessarily notice. We don't necessarily take uh, 
take stock of just how amazing the things that we have in this life are. Even the fact that we have health and life is a blessing and a gift from you. But for those of us who are suffering and struggling during these strange times, I pray, Lord, that you would grant to them peace. I pray that you would grant to them the sustenance that they need. For those who are struggling financially, for those who are struggling personally and emotionally, but especially today, we're lifting up to you those who are struggling physically. Of course, for Jack and Sharon, I pray, Lord, that uh, this time in her life, as uh, her health continues to diminish, that you would grant to them joy, peace, and hope in life that is eternal. I ask, Heavenly Father, that you would remind them of the good gift of eternal life that you have in store for Sharon, that the faith that you have placed in her heart is such that it will carry her from this to the next, and that you are doing this new thing for her and for her family. And rally that family around her, Heavenly Father, to encourage, support, and even as they mourn, I pray that you would remind them of the joy that is to come at the great reunion at the end of time. For all of those who are struggling with this illness, but especially we're lifting up Miss Amanda and John, I pray for a hand of protection upon them. I pray for all of those doctors, for those who are on the front line. I pray that their skills and abilities would be well used, that you would give them wisdom and discernment, and that certain care that comes by years of practice in medicine to care for our beloved family members. I pray for them and lift them up to you. I plead with you. I ask, Heavenly Father, that you would bring health and wellness back to them. I'm especially praying for John today, Lord. I pray that he would be healed. I pray that you would remove this illness from him. I pray that he would recover and be just as strong as he was before. But for all of those who during this time find themselves in uncharted waters with things that are strange and new in front of them, for all of those who are uncertain about the, the time right now and their future, for those who have suffered financial loss and strain, I ask, Heavenly Father, for that measure of peace that you are the rock you are that which never changes, that which is immovable, that which has always remained faithful and gracious to us. We pray all these things trusting in your mercy, and even as your Son has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We have just a few announcements this morning. Um, first, I want to remind everybody that we will be doing communion again just the way we had been doing it before. Uh, as the lockdown happened, we were doing communion after this worship service airs on Sunday morning. You are able to come to the, the church itself and just follow the directions of the elder that will be in the parking lot, kind of point and direction where to go. And we will be in the narthex area and, again, just follow directions. And as before, uh, you can check out on our YouTube site there is, and on our website as well, uh, there is a spot there where we talk about the basic instructions for taking communion. We're just going to re-implement those. So I'm very excited to be offering communion once again. And then there is a congregational meeting June 28th. And I'd said in those announcements that I emailed out earlier and posted online that we're working on finding ways to vote by proxy. Uh, we believe we've got uh, a methodology figured out, but we are still hammering out the details. So I'm not going to quite give you all of those details just yet until we fully know them, and understand exactly what we're going to be doing. I'm just going to kind of hang on to that. Uh, but Theology on Tap is also coming soon. Um, that's going to be beginning in June. Uh, I believe that is the second Friday in June. We're pretty excited about that. Um, but it's going to have to be via Zoom. Uh, 
Uh, that is just the way it is. I'm sure there's more than 10 people who want to come and participate, but uh, as we get closer to those dates, I'll let you know the when, uh, but the where is going to be on Zoom. So make sure you've got your favorite beverage on hand, and it'll be just like Theology and Tap has always been over the summers. And then the last bit is we are in need of some tech volunteers. Because of all of these things that have happened with COVID-19 and because of some of the adjustments that we've had to make with our sanctuary technology, we have upgraded a bunch of things. We are going to need some people to step up. So you don't have to be expert. You don't have to be proficient in a lot of things things, but you have to be willing to learn. Uh, Maybe like computers would be helpful too, or at least have a little bit of knowledge of how computers work. But it's uh, in order to make sure we can live stream our services when we're back live in our sanctuary. For those who can't return, we are going to need some people to uh, step up and volunteer a little bit more. So there is some uh, information on that on Realm as well. Now, this is the part of the service where normally we would hand out those, uh, we would pass the plates to receive our offering, and we can't do that today, and I'm not sure how long it's going to be until we could do that again in the future, even when we're back here in the sanctuary, one of the many things that we have to figure out. But what I do want to encourage you to do is uh, to remain faithful, if, if that is the calling that the Lord has put on your heart, to continue those, those gifts that you have been giving to our congregation to do local and even international ministry. Uh, this would be a great opportunity to sign up online right now. Instead of grabbing that plate as it goes by, when this video is over, go ahead and sign up for online giving. Or if you prefer to mail in your, your donations, that is uh, by any means, that's, that's wonderful. We do appreciate that. For those who are watching online and who are not a part of our local congregation, uh, we appreciate when you send us uh, donations. And we've had a few. And I just want to say Thank you for that. It's, it is not at all expected or anticipated. Uh, but if you truly do want to give us something of value, let us know that you're worshiping with us. Um, you can like this video. Uh, you can subscribe to our YouTube page. You can uh, go and like us on Facebook or let us know you're watching over there. That'd be fantastic. So we do appreciate how much this community has been supporting our congregation. Uh, it has truly been a, a great gift from the Lord. With all of that, we are going to continue now with our confession and absolution. For our time of confession and absolution, I'll make personal confession, and I invite you to make it your own when I speak the words, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with hear our prayer. Let's go to God. Heavenly Father, I confess. I confess that in these strange times, I am quick to get angry or upset. My fuse has been shorter with others. My patience has been tasked. I have been with my, with my heart, with my lips, with my, my voice, my hands. I have been sinful, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry that in these stressful times, I have not been as quick to forgive, to give grace, to act like your son Jesus as I ought to be. Especially in strange times like this, I have those opportunities to witness to others by loving them as you loved us in the strangest of times to you. In a world that you made perfect, broken and sinful. In a world that you created for pure joy and bliss. When you came to this earth, you found it utterly full of disease and death. But you loved us. You cared for us. You sacrificed for us so that we might have a new world. I pray, Lord, that you would teach me to live like that in these strange times and forgive me when I fail. Lord, in your mercy, and I pray, Lord, that you would remind me of how sinful and broken I, this world, and everybody in it are really, truly, outside of these times that are so strange. Remind me when when things seem normal, they're still broken. Remind me in all of those places uh, in life that I travel, in those times where I, I am with people and everything seems just right. And in reality, everything is still full of sin, still broken. I've just, just lost sight of it. And teach me in those moments to heal others, to give them words of comfort and peace. Teach me to be that man who brings to your children the same message, the same hope, the same bedrock of truth that has been true forever, the guidepost, the lighthouse 
that when we call upon your name, though the world fall around us, we have eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, now we come to you in this time of silence to confess those things that are personal and specific to ourselves, those things about which we know we need to change, those things we know are contrary to your word. Father, forgive. Amen. Probably already guessing, the part of the theme for the service today is strange times, and they really, truly are. And our message this morning is about some strange times that were Pentecost, when tongues of fire descended and landed upon the heads of the disciples. They're speaking in the languages of everybody around, and people were, were surely thinking to themselves, these are strange times. Well, the reality is, times are always kind of strange. I mean, that's just the world we live in. It's always changing. It's always new. There's always a new tragedy, a disaster. There's always a new challenge or problem. There's always some marker that these times are strange because the world is flawed, fundamentally at its core because of sin. And that's the great message of the gospel, is that our Lord has given to us one thing that never changes, and that's his love for us. And it is that love that sweeps us up from this broken world to the world where there is no sorrow, there is no suffering, there is no pain. The resurrection is ours because he never changes. So I'm going to speak to you now those words specifically to you that upon your confession of your sins, knowing that you are a sinner and calling upon the name of God, no matter how strange the world seems because of its brokenness and sin, you are forgiven. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue now with our song, Holy Spirit.
scripture lesson today is from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together. And they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes, Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others, mocking, said they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy, and I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, um, those were strange times. <laughs> I imagine for all of those who were present in that moment at Pentecost, the giving of the Holy Spirit, that they were amazed and shocked and thought to themselves, We've never seen anything like this. Almost every day I have that similar conversation with somebody where I say, we've never seen anything like this. Now in reality, of course, there have been times like this before, times of pandemics, uh, the, the 1918 flu. There's, there's lots of different accounts throughout time of, of the Black Plague. And, and we've been in times like this before. But for us, it sure seems strange. 
But it's also kind of fascinating, too, to think about because surely the, the odds are in 30 years I'll be sitting on a couch somewhere and my grandchild will hop up on my lap and start asking and say, hey, hey Grandpa, did, did they really have a time when everybody wore masks going around? Hey, Grandpa, was it, is it true that, that there was a time when restaurants, everybody had to stay separate from each other and in some places you couldn't even legally leave your house or you'd get arrested? Is, is all of that true? And and they'll ask me about those strange times. Just as a side note, by the way, we get a new puppy in our house. And since my, my daughter Phoebe kind of considers the puppy her baby, she's gone to calling me grandpa. So I'm actually pretty comfortable with that. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me at all that, that she calls me grandpa since it's her baby puppy. But grandma, on the other hand, is none, please. So <laughs> you think that's funny. I have to sit next to her at home when she watches this. <laughs> so anyways... But there's always been times like this. There's always been times that people thought were strange. I'm sure that, that my, my dad, and when I remember having this conversation with him, actually, I was asking when I was really little, was there really a time when, when people had to drink from different drinking fountains, the civil rights? And I'm sure he asked his dad about World War II, World War I, and I'm sure they, there was, that generation was asking about the Civil War. We, we always find ourselves enamored with these, these remarkable strange times. Well, these strange times really do serve as an opportunity to remember the world isn't designed this way. The world isn't supposed to be a place where there are pandemics, where there are issues of civil rights, or there's world wars. It, the world isn't supposed to be suffering the way it is, but it is suffering because of sin. And it shows you just how amazing it is when our God does something to intervene like at Pentecost. So this is the tail end of that sermon series that is The Shepherd Speaks. And I know there's no Jesus saying anything in here, but that's kind of the point of Pentecost is the word of the Lord, which has been external all of this time throughout the history from, from Israel when they were hearing the word of the Lord that Moses brought down from a mountain or that the prophets were given on high. The, the prophets heard the word of the Lord, they wrote it down, and it was always this external thing. But Jesus promised, and we covered this in a couple of sermons just previously, Jesus promises to send his Holy Spirit. And one of the greatest blessings of that is the word of the Lord comes into his people and abides in us. The word of the Lord is, has moved from external to now internal. That which takes residence in us, that which wraps itself around us, that which makes us part of, part of this thing called the church. And inside that church is where he bestows upon his people the word that is read aloud and proclaimed and preached, the word that is sung in songs, the word that is made flesh in bread and wine, the word that does that which it does actively in water to wash away sins and, and give eternal life to, to children and adults alike, that word that comes to us when we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and receive forgiveness of sins for the sins that we confess aloud to him. This word goes from outside to inside, and you see the profound effect it has on the disciples. That outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the disciples was like nothing that, that I have ever experienced. I've, I've felt that outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and I'm sure you guys are longing to feel it because you do feel it whenever we're here in the sanctuary all together and we're all worshiping we feel this upswell of the Holy Spirit. And the more, more you get in tune to it, the more you practice the disciplines and the, the learn to look and see and, and find it, which we're going to get again in a minute here, the more you discover the Holy Spirit doesn't come from the outside in. The Holy Spirit, by virtue of our baptism, has already done that. And now it dwells inside of us and it comes out. And man, does the world think that those are strange times. I mean, the people who were there, I, they just didn't know what to think. 
And, and it's obvious, it's obvious that something really strange is happening, stranger than a pandemic, stranger than, than what we think of, of conventional wisdom or the way the world is supposed to be. What they see is something so strange, they can't even figure out what it is. On the one hand, they say, this is remarkable that people from Galilee are speaking all of these different languages that they shouldn't be able to speak or or maybe it's just that they're speaking what they're speaking and everybody hears it in a different language. We're not exactly sure how that worked, but this, this is remarkable. So the, the answer they come to is, I bet they're drunk. Have you ever met a person who drank so much that they made more sense? <laughs> like somehow by drinking more wine early in the morning, they're going to learn a foreign language and proclaim it? I mean, it... But that's how strange this was. They couldn't figure out how this was possible. And yet, it's the way it's supposed to be. See, when God acts in time and space with his Holy Spirit, it seems strange to the world, but it's actually the way the world was designed. The world wasn't designed with hundreds and thousands of different languages. There was only one. And that language was spoken between Adam and Eve and the Lord who walked with them in the garden. And we know the story as it advances forward to the, the Tower of Babel that, that the languages spread all over the world. That's, that's a result of their own pride and their own sin. See, that's part of the problem with sin. Which, by the way, I always forget to give you the, <laughs> the points. The first point is, of course, living in strange si times. And the second one is uh, that which always stays the same, or the one thing that stays the same, however you want to write that down. The problem with sin is that it keeps changing this broken world. The, the broken world keeps getting more and more broke, more and more diseased more and more full of selfishness and pride and arrogance and, and lies and thievery and backstabbing and all of these terrible, ugly things because there's more and more of us. See, we bear that sin in us. This is why that indwelling of the Holy Spirit is so important. Because that sin that is inside of us, that sin that, that we are born with, that is in us, just written into our DNA, and it manifests our, in, in every imperfection of, of, of what we do and say, everything wrong that we do and say, but also just all of the imperfections of the world, those are manifest results of a sinful, broken world. We're constantly dealing with the consequences of sin. And we have this sense we have this sense of that's not the way it's supposed to be. We're not supposed to live in a world where there is a, a pandemic. We're not supposed to live in a world where people aren't allowed to drink from the same water fountain because of the color of their skin. We're not supposed to live in a world where, where a madman wants to take over the world and eradicate a race of people. That's not the world that we're supposed to be in. And when we recognize that and say, these are strange times, that's the moment when we need to recognize the Holy Spirit's working on us. And that's when we need to remember the one thing that never changes, the one thing that stays the same. And it's right here in our text. The text does a nice job of, of predicting and says, you know, Peter says, this is what was prophesied through Joel. Joel said all of these things that were going to happen, all of this brokenness of the world was going to be manifest to us. But then he finishes here at the end, and it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's always been the truth. It's been the truth since the fall into sin that the world keeps changing, that the world is crazy and, and all these strange things keep happening because of sin, because of our personal sin, because that person for some reason hates a group of people or this group of people decide and make terrible decisions or wh whatever it is. All of that leads us to these strange times, but one thing has always been the same. We are saved we are saved as we call upon the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord doesn't change. And that's, that's important. It's not just the name. It's not just knowing Yahweh and then having that 
you know, sort of refined down and clarified to Jesus and even understanding the Holy Spirit, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the proper name of God. That's not what, what our text is really saying. And that's not what I'm saying to you. What I'm saying is when you know who God is, you know him by name when you know who he is. And when you know who he is, he is the one who comes to rescue us from the strange place that is a sinful, broken world. He's the one who comes to save us from the strange times that we create. And I'm not saying that we should blame a person or people for COVID-19. I'm saying it exists because sin comes into the world by people. But there are specific things and situations that I need to be rescued from. I make strange times for myself <laughs> all the time. All the time when I speak ill of somebody or I, I do something that I know I shouldn't do and I know it's going to end up right where it always ends up, I find myself in that sinful place. And yeah, the one thing that doesn't change is I know who God is. Because I know who he is, I understand what he does. What he does is he steps into those strange times and those strange places and he rescues me. He rescues me because I call on his name and I ask for forgiveness and he comes down and he, he rescues me from it. And that doesn't mean that if I put myself in a really crazy situation that I'm forgiven and all of the consequences go away and there's no problems whatsoever. It doesn't mean that if I'm speeding down the road and I see a cop and I'm like, I don't care and I just gun it and I go flying, cut across somebody's lawn and then I go, oh, well, this is a strange time I'm about to end up in, Polk County Jail. <laughs> this would be a very strange time. If I ask for forgiveness, he'll come down and rescue me and escape me out of prison. That's not, that's not going to happen. But what does happen in those times, I find peace. I find comfort in the fact that though I pay the real world consequences for my sin, my next world consequences those have been handled. I have eternal life. I've been made right by my, by my Savior Jesus. I've been made right with my Father in heaven. I have eternal life and I have salvation no matter how strange these times are that I find myself in. And that, that word of comfort, I'm going to use a, a phrase here that's the final bullet point in our sermon. That's God's cairn. The way to spell that word, by the way, is C-A-I-R-N. I heard that word the first time when I was working in a camp in Colorado, and we went rock climbing, mountain climbing, climbing up a 14er. And there's a, at the bottom, you know, as you're going, there's this nice path, you know, through the woods, but then the woods kind of fade away because you're getting closer and closer to the timber line. Well, then there's a nice path through the grass, and that's nice. You're following the path. It's easy. Lots of people have walked it before. No problem. Then you get up to a certain altitude, and there's, nothing. <laughs> there's, there's no path because it's just rock everywhere. You can't see the direction you're supposed to go. So people pile up these, these rocks. They're about, you know, yay big, yay tall usually. And you could just, they're, they're unnatural. They stand out from everything else that's around them, but they're, otherwise you, would, you wouldn't know which direction to go. Moments like Pentecost and moments in our lives where God's speaks into us by way of the Holy Spirit, truth, those are his cairns. Because the problem is we can, because we've been in sin so long, because we've been just part of a, a sinful world so long, it can get to the point where it's hard to see the difference between good and evil. It's hard to tell the difference in, in any situation, what is the, the right way or the wrong way to go. The good news is, even though the, the landscape may all look the same, in any direction that you think you might be going might look all the same to you, there is a path. Jesus says he's the way, the truth, and the life. The Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit is like God's cairn. It's like this little thing that stands out in the midst of everything else that seems the same and everything else that, that looks just like everybody else's life and everybody else's circumstances and everybody else's situation, there will be this thing that stands out to you. And you might wonder, how will I notice? How will I recognize? How will I see? Well, the way in which we see 
those Karens is the Holy Spirit that's in us. And we'll see it with those eyes of faith that draw us to the conclusion, well, the same conclusion that, that our author has today, that Luke has in the, gospel, in the book of Acts. That, that if you call upon his name, he will show up. If you call upon the name of Jesus and say, Lord Jesus, send that Holy Spirit to be active in my life today. It comes out of you to guide and to lead. And it might be the smallest little stack of rocks. Someone says to you a word or in a passing brief moment, you have a conversation with somebody, whatever it might be, the spirit that's in you will nudge, will move, will guide, will point your eyes to it. It's a feeling that I, I can't really describe. You, ha you have to experience it. It's, it's a feeling that I've, I've had, and I know many people in our congregation have talked to me about these, these urgings from the Holy Spirit that, that press them in the right direction. And if you're, if you're nervous about that, wondering, but how do I know and how am I sure and how am I certain? Well, the thing about, thing about God's Karen and the Holy Spirit, and the direction of the path that it takes you on, it's always to Jesus. See, that's, that's the job of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit at Pentecost. The Holy Spirit, when he comes at Pentecost, all that he does, everything that he does through those disciples is to proclaim Jesus, that if you call upon his name, you'll have eternal life. So the, the Holy Spirit's going to be leading you, nudging you, not away from tangentially or off to the side of, but always towards Jesus. And, and if that's not the direction, then that wasn't the Holy Spirit. That was just, you ate something funny yesterday, or maybe you should get checked for COVID. I don't know. But, but the Spirit's going to always guide you towards a more loving, deep, and meaningful relationship with Jesus. And I can tell you exactly how that manifests in your life. You know you're on that path. You know the Spirit's nudging you in that direction when you love others the way Jesus loves you. There it is. You know that you have been nudged towards a relationship with Jesus, that the Holy Spirit is doing his work advancing you when you tell others about Jesus, when you spread the gospel of Jesus, but also simply when you, when you love your neighbor like Jesus would love your neighbor. When, when you act to your wife or to your kids or, or to your parents the same way Jesus would. When you say those things to other people that Jesus would say to them, that's when you know. And you know what Jesus would say and do and how he would act to all of them because that's how he's acted. That's what he says about you. That's it. So as we look forward to this coming holiday weekend, as we look forward to the new normal, I'm hoping that we can find the Holy Spirit active in our hearts, in our lives, in our church. I'm hoping that what we can see is this place in a new normal, in very strange times. Hopefully that you and your family can see in strange times like you haven't dealt with before, I hope you see the Holy Spirit, God himself working towards moving you to a deeper relationship with Jesus to loving others as Jesus loved you. Amen. Would you please stand to receive the blessing? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give to you his peace. Amen. We continue with our final song.